What's up, everybody? Um, happy Friday. Oh, thank God it's the weekend. I can recharge. Um, Y'all just don't understand. There's a lot that goes into making this video. Like, seriously. Like, the behind-the-scenes stuff. I have to edit some things sometimes. And sometimes I have to restart the video sometimes. So there's a lot that goes into it. Anyway. Um, I got some good news for y'all. Well, maybe some bad news with it, too. But good news nonetheless. Michael Easton, a.k.a. John McBain, is officially exiting General Hospital for a while. I'm not sure how long. Here's what's going on. Reported earlier today, according to SoapsInDeath.com, that's where I get all my news from. Well, half of my GH news and soap news in general, SoapsInDeath.com. Um, apparently, Michael Easton, after February the 8th, after February 8th, Michael Easton will, legally, he can't be in General Hospital after February 8th. So, he's leaving the show after February 8th because legally he can't be on the show because of Prospect Park. Remember, in 2011, he signed that contract with Prospect Park. So, they're in a legal battle now. Prospect Park and ABC are trying to work things out. And apparently, the same goes for Kristen Alderson and Roger Howard. After February 8th, they're not going to be on the show either because of their deals with Prospect Parks, because of the fact that Prospect Parks own the rights to all three of those characters. So they're pulling the plug on those characters from General Hospital until this legal situation is dealt with. And right now, Prospect Park and ABC are in the midst of trying to figure out this legal process right now. So you will not be seeing Michael Easton and probably Kristen Alderson and Todd Manning until they figure out this legal situation between Prospect Park and ABC, just to let y'all know. Okay. Um, anyway, today's episode, loved it. Um, it was a good cliffhanger Friday. Here's, I have a theory about John McBain and this murder mystery. I have a theory about this. It's probably the same theory that some of y'all have. You know, some of y'all think John McBain has a twin out there. Hear me out on this. Stick, stick with me on this. What if Caleb Morley is real? Think about it. What if John's father and mother had twin boys, Caleb and John, but John never knew Caleb? Think about it. They could have probably gave the kid up for adoption or thought the kid died or something like that. And it's logical. And think about it. But I'm, I'm sure some of y'all are probably thinking, well, how did Caleb become a vampire and John didn't? Hear me out. What if John got bit by a vampire? I mean, not John, Caleb. What if Caleb got bit by a vampire and that turned him into Caleb Morley? It's logical. Like, if you really think about it, if you if they want to go into this direction. Because why else would people keep thinking John McBain is Caleb Morley? Even Allison thought it. Even though, you know, Allison and... Um, Allison and... Uh, Lucy Coe are batshit crazy pretty much. They both need to be in Fern Cliff. Anyway, um, Lucy Coe, when she was talking to Sam, pretty much confirmed what I already knew. Some things I didn't know. Remember when I said on um, Port Charles, Allison got pregnant and she didn't know if Rafe or Caleb was the father. See, I didn't know Caleb was the biological father of Rafe. I assumed that we, you know, they just left it on that cliffhanger. But according to Lucy, Caleb is Rafe's father. So, um, it kind of makes sense. Maybe Caleb, the real Caleb, found out Rafe was his son. And Allison was keeping him from him. And maybe, because remember when... Allison was waiting for John McBain to come to the pier. Remember you heard footsteps and stuff like that? We don't we know for a fact that wasn't John McBain. Well, we don't know if that was John or if that was Ray or if that was really Caleb, but I heard footsteps. So we're not sure. Um and when Anna Devane was talking to Rafe, Rafe was kind of pissing me off a little bit because little motherfucker wasn't trying to answer no questions. She kept asking him every question under the book, and he just kept not answering the question until she asked him, did he kill Allison? And then he said no. Then he pointed the finger at John McBain and said John did it. 
So, I don't know. Um, with Michael Easton leaving the show, I don't know what's that going to do to this murder investigation situation. I'm not sure what it's going to do. It might hinder this storyline, so I don't know. Um, anyway, I just don't know what the fuck to make out of this storyline. Like, is it possible Caleb Morley is really alive and John McBain's twin brother? I mean, is it? I, I don't know. Hey, I do not know. Anyway, um, Molly already sprung over this little boy. Somebody said it was kind of too soon for them to be kind of hooking her up with somebody else, but I didn't think it was to that because she just met Rafe. But she's sitting at the table daydreaming about the kid or whatever, you know, having flashbacks about their first meeting. I think the reason why she's thinking about Rafe is because of his mysteriousness, I think, because he is a mystery. Like, he, you know, he just came out of nowhere. And he's a homeless kid. You know, she don't know anything about him, so she's curious about him. And, of course, TJ acting, acting jealous and whatnot. You can tell TJ was jealous. And TJ bought Molly a bouquet of flowers. I was like, where did TJ get money to buy a bouquet of flowers? And did you not see the sneakers TJ had on? Them was some nice looking expensive sneakers. Sean must be Sean must be taking care of him well. I'm like, uh, you bought a bouquet of flowers, you got on some nice looking kicks. I'm like, okay. Um I I don't know what it is. I just love Molly and TJ's relationship. I don't know, I just like it. Cause it's the most stable relationship on this show. Like everybody else's relationship is pretty much in turmoil or have ended. And some just born. But TJ and Molly, I just like the stability of their relationship. It's cool. Like, you know, I don't get bored watching TJ and Molly. I honestly don't. Um, moving on. Um The scene with Maxi Spinelli, Lulu, and uh, Ellie. Why do I want to call Ellie Sabrina? I don't know. Anyway, um, Ellie was giving it to Maxie, though. Even though I know Maxie, for a fact, did not rig her car. Come on now. Maxie don't know shit about cars or brakes. Please. Maxie is the ditzy type. She don't know nothing about cars. But um, the facial expressions Lulu was making the whole time just had me just laughing my ass off. I love the facial expressions Lulu made. Shit is funny. Um, Ellie, like Spinelli, it's so funny seeing Spinelli now because it's like a few years ago he couldn't get a woman to like him, and now it's like he got two chicks who pretty much love him. Like I'm like, you better do your shit, Spinelli. Spinelli trying to act like a player from the Himalayas is what he trying to act like. He, I don't, I don't think he's intentionally trying to be a player or trying to use these girls or nothing like that. But I think it's coming across as that, because it's like you're in a love triangle. Maxi, how many times can I say this about Maxi? Bitch, shame the devil and tell the truth. Tell the truth and shame the devil, please. Just, just tell the truth. Because February sweeps, I heard a lot of shit is about to come out during February sweeps. A lot of secrets. So, Maxie's might be one of them. And I'm like, Sp Spinelli need to know this baby is his baby. And you need to just tell the truth to Lulu and Dante and get this shit over with. Because the longer you hold on to the secret, the worse the secret's going to be when it come out. And, there, and trust me, Lulu is going to hate you even more when the secret comes out. Because you knew this for months. She's going to hate you. So, just tell the truth. We're, I cannot believe we're already in February. I mean, it feels like New Year's was just yesterday. My goodness. Anyway, um, yeah, she just needs to tell the fucking truth. Like, seriously, Maxie, stop lying. Is that all you know how to do? Anyway, um, who else I about to talk about? Patrick. Finally, Patrick, you cut this bitch off. It's about time, Patrick. Like, you were just giving me a headache when you believed Brit over Sabrina and your daughter and Elizabeth. I'm like, everybody warned you and you just sat there and believed this hooker over everybody else that's known you for a while. And you, especially Elizabeth, like, you known Elizabeth for the past couple of years now. You should have definitely took her word and mainly you should have took the word of your daughter. Now he finally knows the truth, and he knows that Brit is a lion scumbag. It's about time. Um, 
Brit is a complete lying bitch. Like seriously, she try to stand there and play it off and act like she likes Emma. And I'm like, no, you don't. And then got a nerve to call Sabrina a manipulative. Well, not manipulative, but you're gonna sit there and call her a bitch and try to say that she planned all this from the start just to get Patrick all to herself. Come on now. Really, Brit, Brit is so paranoid and delusional. Like, you honestly think this girl can cock it all of this up just to get Patrick to herself and get him away from you? Knowing damn well everything you said about Emma was true. Why would she need to... First of all, she never brainwashed Emma. It's called genuinely caring about somebody. She genuinely cares for that little girl. And she genuinely loves Emma. And Emma loves her. You just came off as a bitch on wheels. That's why Emma didn't like you, because you were a bitch. And now you want to storm off and get mad. But if I was Sabrina, seriously, I would watch my back. Because knowing Brit, trust, she ain't going to go down without a fight. And I already know she's not going to leave this alone. So Sabrina might want to keep her eyes open on that bitch. Um, and I think now she should just tell Patrick how she feels. You know what I mean? Sabrina should just tell Patrick how she feels and get all of this over with. And now Britt might try to tell Lulu about Maxie's secret about the baby being Spinelli's. I doubt it, but I, I'm trying to lean towards that. But I doubt it's going to happen. Anyway, AJ and Liz, I kind of like their scenes today. I'm not a huge fan of Liz. I tolerate Liz because she is on the show, so I tolerate the bitch. But anyway, I'm not a huge fan of them hooking him up with her or trying to hook him up with her. But it is what it is. You know, I'm not a writer on the show, so I can't do anything about it. But it is what it is. Um, I thought at first he was having a heart attack. Some people say AJ, should he's too young to have a heart attack. AJ's in his 40s. What is AJ? 45, I believe. So him having a heart attack is normal at his age especially when you're dealing with a lot of stress it's normal but he was having a panic attack so you know i never knew he had panic problems but i mean i can understand why he panicked why he would have a panic attack because he's worried about elq and you know that's a that's stress you know he's panicking about how to fix the situation with elq and i'm just glad elizabeth was there to help him because she is a nurse so she would know what to do and she knew the symptoms and stuff like that, so she could confirm if he was having a heart attack or not. So it was good that she was there. Um, Michael and Star scenes, I liked it. Um, I, I, I think Michael, some people were harsh on Michael yesterday in my comment box, and I just felt like y'all were maybe a little too harsh. I'm like, I don't think Michael's dumb, and I don't think he's disloyal. He's been very loyal to Sonny, Jason, and everybody else for years. He never forgotten Jason. He never will, but he's very loyal to Sonny. But here's the thing, evidence, there's evidence that points to Sonny. Like I said, it's circumstantial evidence, but it's evidence nonetheless. One, Sonny hates AJ. He would do anything to destroy AJ. Two, he hates the idea of AJ working with Michael because that's going to bond them and bring them closer. Three, he was seen walking out of Tracy Quartermain's office. Four, AJ asked him why was he with Tracy and Sonny said business. Five, Sonny never does business with the quarter man. Six, he called Tracy. So that's enough evidence to kind of prove his guilt even though he's innocent. But still, I can understand why AJ and Michael would think he would do something like this. Because they wouldn't suspect Tracy because they know if Tracy was to put this type of information out, she would go to prison for it. That's why they don't suspect Tracy. So you gotta kind of understand why Michael thinks Sonny's lying. You gotta you gotta see it Michael's way. I see it Michael's way, even though you know Sonny's innocent. Just to point that out. But um, I don't know what they're gonna do. Like I said, with Star character, Todd character, and John character after February eighth. I'm not sure. Um, I think Star is just trying to make Michael think more rationally. You know what I mean? He's trying to make him think before he jumps to conclusions. That's what Star is trying to do. Like, what if Sonny's telling the truth? And she has a point. Why well, believe Connie? Connie's a compulsive liar, so I can understand that. But um, I can understand why she would tell Michael that. You know, she's trying to see, get Michael to see things from another side instead of one-sided. You know, because there's always two sides to the story. 
to me, there's always three sides to a story. Your side, that person's side, and in the middle, there's the truth. So, in a way, there's always three sides to every story. The two stories and the truth. Somewhere the truth is in here, so I'm sure they're going to find out eventually. Um... Anyway, I just hope they hurry up and stop this vampire stuff because uh, Lucy Cole is batshit crazy and they really need to stop with this craziness. Like, seriously, you talk like an idiot. Vampires? Are you serious? I could, If I was a doctor or something like that or a civilian, period, on that show, I would think she was batshit crazy myself. Like, you're delusional. Um... Anyway, Monday looks like it's going to be a killer episode. The return of Heather Weber linking up with Lucy and Todd at the same time. That should be fun. Not for me, but I'm just saying. Um, oh, yeah. Did y'all notice that when Michael and Star walked into the diner, they walked right past Molly? Like, Mo like Michael, you didn't see your own freaking cousin sitting here. You could have said hello. I'm just had to point that out because I noticed it. Anyway, um... I hope everybody have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Um, happy Friday again. Happy February. It's the beginning of the new month. So, hope everybody enjoy your weekend. See you all Monday.